Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Good evening. Good evening. Today we're back in ordinary time with celebrating the 11th Sunday in ordinary time. And so let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbors in thought, word, deed, and omission, so it may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidier found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, through my thoughts, through my words, through what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. For your penance, I would ask you to do an act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next couple of days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You adorn the year with your bounty, your paths drip with fruitful rain. because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, your Son summoned his disciples to gather in a harvest of souls. Send out more laborers for your holy church, that the people of your flock may have shepherds to lead them to you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading.
The first reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Israelites came to the desert of Sinai and pitched camp. While Israel was encamped here in front of the mountain, Moses went up to the mountain to God. Then the Lord called to him and said, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves how I treated the Egyptians, and how I bore you up on eagles' wings and brought you here to myself. Therefore, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people. Through all earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please respond. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He made us his we are, his people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is good, his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one person die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then? since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if we, while we are his enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his twelve apostles and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon from Cana, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, 
drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. This is the gospel of the Lord. Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those are taken from today's gospel according to St. Matthew in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, why would Jesus send out the twelve just as he, after he called them to not go some places but only to the Jews? might be a question that we've pondered when we've heard this gospel in the past. But there's a reason for that. That is, he had to start somewhere. And right after that, his message, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, would most readily be recognized by the Jews because Jesus was a Jew, and so were the 12 that he called. So they were to go to their own people, their own friends, their own neighbors, and proclaim, in the words of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then to perform miracles, curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing lepers, and so on and so forth. Now these are some very great and powerful things that Jesus is asking these 12 guys to do right after he called them and said, follow me, now do this. Can only imagine how they felt with this mission that they were given. Probably, how? How am I going to do this? How am I going to talk to Joe or, or Max and tell them this? And what? <laughs> but this is exactly what we are called to do. We're called to go to our friends, to our family, to the people we know, and bring them the good news. And that, sometimes, is harder than going to a complete stranger. Because they will question us. They'll be more ready to question us. They may even say, who the heck are you trying to tell me what to do? Well, we're, we're not. We're introducing them to basically the creator of all and the savior of all. And giving them an opportunity for eternal life. That's the greatest gift we can give someone that we love, right? The possibility of being with Jesus forever instead of being separated from him with the fires of hell? I, if you love someone, I think it's natural you'd want them to know about it at least so they can make a good decision, at least an informed one. But due to our free will, we have to respect their decision as well as long as we give them the opportunity. And that's what Jesus calls us to do to be in a, in a missionary way to introduce people, give them the information, and let them make their decision. Also, respect that decision, and wherever it may land, but know that we at least did our best to help them. Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Let us now stand and turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us all as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Confident in the infinite mercy and abiding love of the Father, let us turn to him with our needs. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit may lead all to a deeper com conversion and a greater obedience to God's commands, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, in our communities, and in our home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Bishop Jerry, and all the clergy, that they may remain faithful to Christ's gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all fathers, that they may be affirmed and strengthened in their calling to give themselves to, in love to their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those recovering from surgery, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may find consolation through Christ's healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of our hearts. And for whom this Mass is being offered for the deceased clergy of the PNCC, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, source of all life and source of all grace, hear our prayers and grant us perseverance in living the vocation you have given to each of us. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness, has spread to offer truth is given, and even hands of faith may become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this wine. Are you like God of all creation through this earth's wine to offer through the vine where living hands may become our spiritual drink? God, we ask you to receive us and please with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. 
spirit and bless this sacrifice that's been prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. You see the softness of the church and the passion of the church and such a Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty God, through this holy sacrifice, may we be absolved from all of our sins and sheltered from all temptations. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. Empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic prayer number two, which is found on page 82, if you're following along. We have thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you are well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread, he gave you thanks, and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling that his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever. Amen. Page 95, let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? This is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us say together the First Communion Prayer on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. For those who are joining us online or who for personal reasons cannot receive the body and blood of Christ today, please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love. My Lord and Savior. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table of the Lord. Body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ. The 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 body and blood of Christ.
Because it's a bigger heart that will try to take this being the gift of receiver and healing straight down for it. Therefore, I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. Let us pray. Lord our God, may we who have been filled with this heavenly food go forth as your workers who never cease in praising you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you once again, Bert, for the beautiful music. Um, there is one announcement I did not mention. If you know of any youth who uh, are in your families, children, grandchildren, whatever, uh, the Western Diocese Youth Gathering will take place July 31st to August 3rd at Walnut Ridge in Morgantown, Indiana. The cost is reduced this year to only $125, and if that's even too much, let me know. We can make arrangements. Um, adults are also needed as chaperones, and the deadline is June 25th uh, for uh, getting your name in. So I hope you have a wonderful week, rest of the weekend. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, remain in a state of grace by evil wherever you find it, and spread joy wherever you go. Thank you.